Welcome back to another Getting There series. My name is Quentin Normore. I am the Associate Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion at AT Steel University. Uh, we are so thankful you've taken time out of your day to join us uh, to learn more about how one of our fantastic students at AT Steel University has gotten there. And I say gotten there because Theo uh, is finishing up his fourth year and about to get out into practice. So uh, Theo, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of this tremendous amount of uh, work that you have done uh, to come and sit and visit with us about what it takes to get to where you are. Thank you, Clint. Thanks, okay. thanks for having me. Oh, appreciate it. So uh, talk to us a little bit about where you're from. You know, give us your name again yeah. and tell us your year and where you're from. Okay. Well, I'm Theo Jose Emanuel. I'm a fourth year medical student at Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, uh, but I traveled a lot throughout my childhood and then uh, ended up doing uh, my undergraduate studies at the University of Nevada, Reno. And then that's when I applied to uh, AT Steel University and then I started medical school in uh, 2014. Most students uh, like us, most students of color or students who are from underrepresented communities mm -hmm. have had challenges getting there. Talk about uh, a challenge that you faced and what you've done to overcome that. How you overcome that challenge? Well, one recent challenge that I had was uh, during my third year, and that's when uh, when I was preparing myself for for the board exam. The board exam it's a, it's a two part uh, exam where one is the written exam, and then you have to do a practical. Mm -hmm. And uh, long story short, I didn't really have a great practical exam my first my first trial through it. So that was a bit of a challenge for me, just kind of accepting that and then you know, having to really try to improve on my, um, on my clinical skills and, and really try to master all that and then retake it. But you know, every student has that, that story of just going through an obstacle. And, but it's really the same theme, the same story of just realizing your failures and not turning away and not walking away, but just realizing that, accepting that working hard, harder, working better to try to improve yourself every day and then continue to improve yourself day on, day out. You know, one of the things that uh, our university, what makes us unique in many ways, once we're the founding uh, institution of osteopathic medicine at Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, but also we practice uh, the ideology of cultural proficiency. And cultural proficiency takes one beyond competence in, in terms of bridging that you know, communication divide yeah. with your patient or anybody you interact with uh, from a cultural standpoint. Yeah. Osteopathy kind of resonates along those lines because the, the tenets of osteopathy is body, mind, and spirit. And we've tagged a, a theme in the diversity uh, realm with regard to that, which is be the light of hope you wish to see in the world. Mm -hmm. During a recent conversation you and I had, we talked about relationships, especially in the uh, the practical sense that you as a practitioner and, and, and working through patients. Yeah. But what you said really struck a chord with me because you, you focused on self. Uh, in, in light of all those challenges that you face in communicating with some patients, you said that you always look back on uh, how you could approach that aspect differently to, to improve the communication process with that patient. I think that is important and, and certainly an insightful perspective and one that can probably only come from someone in their fourth year who's almost uh, out in the, the world practicing uh, his craft. Talk to us a little bit about how you, you came through that, yeah. that understanding and, yeah. how, and how that makes you more of a complete doctor. Yeah, initially when, when you start third year, um, you, you, you begin doing these rotations where you're out in the, clinic set, in the clinical setting, in the hospital setting, and uh, I'm sure a lot of my uh, colleagues would, would agree that in the, in the beginning, it's all about trying to make sure you have everything down. So when you're, when you're in the clinic, when you're in the hospital, are you asking all the appropriate questions? Are you doing all the necessary physical examinations? So when you're tasked trying to you know, remember and, and keep everything kind of sorted out, you kind of forget that you're there to just talk to a person and gain understanding, gain perspective and try to help that person in any way, shape, or form. Once you begin fourth year, you begin getting a little more comfortable with the, with the medical aspect of why you're there. Why am I there? I'm, I'm there to take care of a patient. But am I just there just to take care of them medically, or am I supposed to be someone that just walks in and just tries to understand that person's you know, story, that, their background? Right. And so I began to really just kind of take the time to just 
listen to patients and gain information as opposed to just constantly focusing on what I need to do medically. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began to realize that I'm going to have days where patients aren't going to want to talk to me or, or maybe they're just dismissive or, you know, or, or, or argumentative. Mm -hmm. Instead of being angry or instead of um, building a wall up myself, I think it's, it's crucial for you to take that experience and try to see what you could do differently mm -hmm. to try to, again, be the light for that patient because you're seeing that person at one of their lowest moments, their lowest point in life. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's, it's a privilege for, for us to, to be there and to just be someone there that, that can help or listen or just you know, be the light, as you said. Well, that's fantastic because you know that kind of um, uh, has a, a a real you, distinct connection to most of our audience. Most of the people who tune in to, to uh, watch this webinar are prospective students, and what you've described is really relationships and, and being able to uh, manage relationships effectively, exactly. communicate effectively. And as a prospective student, it is important, I think, for the students to also be able to manage relationships uh, as they're trying to get to where you are. Uh, so. What uh, advice would you give for them to improve their ability to uh, reach out and communicate with those who may be in a position to be helpful, or may not, but to have that, uh, have that practice so when they get to where you are, at least that part of it has already been practiced. It's right. part of their DNA. So the number one advice that I could give is just to just go out there and just be available. You will get people that don't necessarily need your services or maybe they're not accepting volunteers at that time just c continue to you know contact that person periodically and uh, honestly it's it's all about just giving your time to just be there be present and um, and really be open to the entire experience don't just wait to shadow the doctor um, talk to the nursing staff talk to the technicians you know if it's in the hospital if it's if it's in the clinic talk to the assistants um, really, I think there is no bad um, source for information when it, when it comes to shadowing and volunteering. Whoever you talk to, you're going to gain a perspective. You're going to gain experience. You know, maybe, maybe you talk to a person and it's not necessarily something you know, related to the medical field, but just life overall. I think the, the number one concern is that uh, we're training medical students that don't necessarily have a whole lot of life experience. So they have the medical knowledge, but they just don't have the life experience to tie that down. And that's why you see a lot of seasoned doctors really reach their, their high, the height of their careers when they uh, begin to take pieces from both sides, from their mm -hmm. life experience and from their medical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And really, that's obviously, that's, that's a lifelong journey. But yeah. if you can start now, if you can go out, volunteer, make yourself available when you're not studying for classes and whatnot, I think that's truly the, the best thing that you could do in uh, preparing yourself for uh, medical school and the medical profession. Okay. Theo, thank you so much for your time, your talent, your wisdom, uh, and, and all that you've done to make ATSU a better place and to make our practice a, a better practice for society. So we really appreciate that. It's my pleasure. Thank and you. thank you for joining the webinar series. If you want to learn more about the university, go to our web page. I have it up here for you. It's www.atsu.edu forward slash diversity. A.T. Steel University is a graduate, comprehensive graduate health sciences institution. We have six schools and more than 24 programs. We have the Arizona School of Health Sciences. We have the College of Graduate Health Studies. We have the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine. We have the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Hygiene, the Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Hygiene, and we have the School of Osteopathic Medicine in Arizona. You can find more about those schools at that website, but moreover, Take the advice that Dr. Emanuel has provided so that you too can pursue a path in any profession because it traverses all of the graduate health professions that we offer and many others. We not only want to see you uh, pursue your career, we hope that you choose A.T. Steele University, but moreover, we want you to get into the school of your choice and be successful. Again, thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Look forward to seeing you in our next one.